Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now I've actually painted Dark Angels on the channel before, but it was quite a while ago and I'll be honest, my methods and some of the paints that we're going to use have improved since then. So it felt timely, what with the return of the lion in 10th edition 40k coming up, to revisit the Dark Angels and show you a way to get them on the table very quickly. So all of the paints will be listed in the description below. Let's not waste any time. Let's get started. So once you've got your Dark Angel assembled, the very first thing to do is to prime him. Now I've used here matte black from the Army Painter, but it does not matter which black primer you use. Black is black is black, for the purposes of this here. I've also seen people get some very good results from a dark grey, so don't worry too much if you can't get your hands on black, although it is quite common. This is just what we're going to start with here. So once that has settled, what we're going to do is lay down our green base coat. Now interestingly enough, the Army Painter also does a primer spray called Angel Green. And it's a very dark green, so I'll let you guess which angels that's aimed at. But what I have here is Caliban Green. So any big brush will do the job for this. We do not need to be careful at all. Just splatter this on. Now with a big brush, you'll see sometimes you do get some streaking. And I've got a little bit of water in here, so some of the primer is still going to show through. So once I've laid down this first layer of green, I'll let this dry thoroughly, and then apply a second over the top. So you might see how having a green primer would speed things up. Now after two coats, we've got a nice solid green. And now we're going to ruin it. What I have lurking behind me here is Underhive Ash. Now previously I've used Niblet Green, which is really fun to say, but it's not quite as bright as I think is going to work for this method. So instead we're going to turn to something which is quite light and almost a little yellowish. What I'm using here is actually a makeup brush, because the soft bristles here are going to help us to avoid some of the chalkiness. Uh, it's a little inevitable, but we're not too worried about it at all. So once you've worked some of it out into a bit of kitchen towel, what we'll do is start lightly flicking against the edges of the detail. You'll see that I'm moving the model around so that as much as possible I'm catching against the uh, direction of the detail. So what I'm going to do now is carefully go around the whole miniature and you'll see I can just catch the edges and give us a nice quick highlight. Now in some areas, particularly on his knees, you're going to see that we catch this and oopsie daisy, not to worry. I'm going to show you how we'll fix that up in a little bit. Now after a couple of passes around, you're going to have something that looks like that. And I think that yellowish tint really helps with the highlight for our dark green. But there are going to be some areas where eh, you've ended up with it where you don't really want it. But what I'm doing now is taking some Caliban green, and I've mixed this down about two parts water to one part paint. And all I'm going to do is go over the flat areas of the panels that I don't want that chalkiness. And like I said, you don't need to go completely overboard with this. And that you'll find in some areas you want to leave a little bit more of the dry brush than you might think. But anywhere where you know, for example, like up on his helmet here, the section on his brow, just a little bit of that Caliban green to dull that down again. And yeah, tidy up as much of this as you like. And once you've done any tidy up that you want to, this is what you'll have. From here, what you might want to do is to hit him with an all-over shade or something like Bealtan Green to tie those together. But I don't think you're going to need to. Uh, this works perfectly well. Uh, you could even non-oil the recesses, but because he's such a dark color scheme, I don't think it's going to matter. What that really bright highlight is going to do is be the star of the show, basically. Now what I'm going to do is paint in the chest eagle, and I'm going to do this before the bolter, so if I make any mistakes, I can aim towards the bolter and splash the back of that. I have some Corax White. Now some folks don't get on with Corax White, um, but what I'd suggest is when you first open it, put a little bit of Lamian Medium in there, and some, like an agitator or something, and you'll find it keeps it nice and fluid for much longer. So remember as well that you are holding a three-dimensional object, so you can approach that eagle from all sorts of different directions. At the same time, I've also painted in his eyes. 
Uh, I did do that off camera because it is kind of a fuss. But if you make a mistake, you can go back to your Caliban Green and paint around the edges, no trouble. Now you'll see, if I am really careful, I can actually show you, like quite deliberately, parts of the chest eagle where I haven't painted. But you have to go looking for them. Some people get very cross when you actually suggest don't paint the things you can't see. Um, I'm not looking to win Golden Demon. I want to get models on the table very quickly. So it's a matter of personal preference. I suggest you don't paint in sub-assemblies unless you really have to. You're not going to save as much time as you'd think. So what I have is Skeleton Horde. And this is going to go very quickly over that white and give us... Oh, look at that. Nice quick bone color on the chest eagle. Well, that's a nice simple bone color there. What I'm going to use now is Baal Red, and I'm going to paint in his eyes over the white. Now you can use Blood Angels Red if that's what you've got. Uh, to be honest, anything will do here, but uh, Baal Red is nice and bright. So well, I, I like that. Now we can start laying down some of the other base coats. I'll use Mournfang Brown for his leather. Then all of the metallic details I'm going to paint with Iron Hand Steel. Now this is something I quite like using a uh, synthetic brush for because I can be quite rough with it. Really jam it into places. And don't do what I always do and don't forget the uh, pistol and these little dealies on his power plant too. We'll then use Mephiston Red to paint in the bolter casing. And take your time as you come near his hands. Anything that's going to be gold or scroll work later on, just paint straight over the top of. Then with some Retributor armor, you can paint in your gold details. Obviously it's going to depend how you've assembled your fella, on what he will have on him, some of these little trinkets. And then the very last base coat that we're going to apply will be Corvus Black. Now I'm going to use this to paint in the undersuit of the Marine, so in the joints of his armor, I'm using this instead of a Baden Black because it's a very dark grey. So when we shade it, we will still get a little bit of variation in colour. Now you'll save a lot of time if you leave your tidy up stages till last. So if you need to go back and touch up any of the metal or what have you, you can do that now. What I've got is Non Oil. I'm giving this a really good shake. And we're going to apply this quite liberally over pretty much all of those base coats we've just done. So load up your brush, make sure that you're working it into any recesses. Particularly on his bolter, there's quite a bit of detail that you do want to make sure this settles in. Uh, yeah, over all of that stuff we've just done, a bit of Nuln Oil now. now. One of the things I do like about the new formulation Nuln Oil is that the shading effect is a little bit more subtle. So you can use it over more things without it really darting things down. So I quite like how that's turned out. I am going to do just a couple of highlights to finish this fella off. I'm going to start with Wild Rider Red, which is quite a departure from the Mephiston Red we used. But I do want quite a light finish to my highlights, so just a tiny wee bit on my brush, you see, not very much at all. I'm just going to flick along the edges uh, very carefully to catch some of those corners. I'll then use just a little bit of Scrag Brown on the brown leather. And then the final highlight I'm going to apply is some steel. This is from the Vallejo Model Air range. Now instead here you could use uh, Stormhost Silver, but I tend to find that steel flows just a little bit more easily off the brush. So just a tiny wee bit of this at the edges. Then what I'm going to do is take this fella outside. I'm going to hit him with a matte varnish. I do tend to recommend with Space Marines hit them with a satin. So something like Munitorum varnish will work very well. Uh, but unfortunately matte varnish just photographs better. So uh, <laughs> in order to show you the finished product, it's easier for me to use a matte. But you use whatever you like the look of. Let's get a look at this fella once he is all finished. And there at last, our Dark Angel is complete. Now, if you've got any decals or such that you want to apply, then apply those before you two put the varnish on. But otherwise, that is as easy as it is. You don't need to worry too much about shading or anything like that, especially with such dark armor. If you do want to go ahead and try giving him a shade, what I'd recommend would be to get one fella and just try him using Nuln Oil 
at the same time that you put it over the gun and the leather and everything else, because I think that'll probably work pretty well. But the end result here is still really easy to do and relatively quick. So as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan, Kyrie, Rod, Jimmy, Andrew, and Phil. Whew, getting to be a bit of a mouthful there. <laughs> you folks, thank you very much for your support. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them into the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.